What's up everybody, Haley here from Endor Fitness and today we're gonna be talking through proper breathing mechanics, diaphragmatic breathing, and then exercises that you can start with to start working through these breathing patterns, figuring it out, how is it gonna work during exercise, things like that. Because I think people forget that there is a proper way to breathe and there is especially a proper way to breathe through exercise. Okay. You shouldn't just be focusing on doing the squats and getting them over with. We want to think about breathing through our exercises so that we have a nice, strong core. It is helping us through the process, right? And then from there, we're going to be able to progress. We're going to be able to lift heavier, and we're going to have a functional rather than a dysfunctional one if we are not doing it properly, okay? So to start, we're going to teach through diaphragmatic breathing, and then we will go ahead and go on from there. So the first things first, I want you to actually sit, put one hand on your chest, one hand on your stomach. I want you to take a deep breath just like you normally would. <sighs> breathe out. Did you feel one of your hands move? Okay, did you feel the hand on your chest move or did you feel the hand on your belly move? If you did feel one of them move, it means that you are typically on a day-to-day -day basis breathing incorrectly, okay? We do not want to breathe into our chest, okay? Because it's going to cause us to actually not be able to catch our breath. Um, and it can also lead to just not being able to take a deep enough breath. If you feel your hand move on your stomach, it means you're breathing into your belly. If we are breathing into our belly without wanting to, without thinking about it, without doing it properly, that means that we are then pushing air out against our connective tissue, against our abdominal wall, which therefore is actually going to weaken it over time, okay? Because you're breathing into something, if you breathe in, it's gonna stretch and come back. And over time, it's just gonna keep stretching, okay? Unless we learn how to contract it, how to strengthen it, and make sure that pulls back together. So diaphragmatic breathing, where you really want your breath to go, is actually into your rib cage. Okay, so your diaphragm sits right underneath your rib cage. So when you breathe into your diaphragm, it is actually your ribs that you're going to feel moving. Okay, so we're going to go ahead and lay on our back. If you want to do this with me, that would be awesome. You're going to bend your legs, your feet are flat on the floor. I want you to go ahead and put your hands on either side onto your ribs, okay? So it's gonna be, you know, just underneath your chest on your rib cage. Now I want you to take a deep breath. When you take this deep breath, I want you to think about moving your hands, which means your rib cages are gonna expand, your hands are gonna move outwards, okay? So taking a deep breath, feeling the hands move, and then breathing out through the mouth. What you can also do is put a hand on your chest, a hand on your belly, and take a deep breath, moving neither of these hands, right? Then we know that the air is going into that diaphragm. So we want to move, make the ribs move, okay? So you almost wanna think about breathing into your back. So if we think about breathing into the back, you're gonna feel that rib cage expand, okay? So from there, we have now learned the proper breathing now I want you to go ahead and we're going to think about proper core engagement. So we're going to go ahead and stay right in this position. So for our core engagement, the first thing that we want to do is when you lay flat on the floor, you're going to notice that there's likely a slight arch in your back or the way that your hips are tilted. It might just mean, you know, your back could be flat. It's just not fully engaged. So the first thing you want to do is the act of pressing that low back into the floor. So as you can see, I have an anterior pelvic tilt regularly, so I do have an arch when I lay flat on the floor. So I'm going to go ahead and tilt my hips back, so it's almost like tugging my tailbone under, and that is going to flatten my back out and start engaging those deep abdominal muscles. Okay, so from there, we're going to take a deep breath into our rib cage. Now as we breathe out, we want to think about air leaving our stomach, because as we inhale through our diaphragm, Air comes down, we breathe out, air leaves. Okay, so when we take a deep breath in, we want to think about engaging the core like a corset around the air as it leaves. Okay, so the low back is pressed. We took a deep breath into the rib cage and the diaphragm. Now, as we breathe out, we want to start slowly engaging those muscles around the air as it leaves while pulling the ribs down. Okay, so again, okay, 
So you can see me take the breath into the diaphragm, tilt the hips, engage the core. Okay. Now another part of this is engaging through the pelvic floor when we also engage our core. So we take a deep breath in as that air leaves, we want to actually start engaging through the pelvic floor and then our abs all the way up. So a few things that you can think about when you are talking about the pelvic floor, a great one that you can think about as a cue is the act of holding in a fart. Okay. So when we do that, we know what that movement in is, and that's going to help contract those deep abdominal muscles. What you also want to do is contract the pelvic floor. So that's going to be something, you know, of, pulling in from the pelvic floor. It's going to be like picking up a piece of paper. It could be pulling up, closing it, different things like that. There are different ways to think about it. It is the feeling, right, if you have done a Kegel before, okay? So now what we want to do is deep breath into the diaphragm, tilt those hips, hold in the fart, pull in that pelvic floor, and then engage the core around. Okay, so what we've just done is actually one of the first exercises that you can do to practice this breathing, which is called a pelvic tilt. So the pelvic tilt is that press of the low back, the tilt of the hips and the pelvis to then engage the pelvic floor, engage the core. Okay, so we did the pelvic or we did the pelvic tilt. Another exercise that you can do is called the heel slide. So this is like another advancement up. It helps you figure out breathing and core engagement through a movement. Okay, so what we're gonna do is go ahead and breathe into that diaphragm. We're gonna straighten the leg. Okay, now as we pull that leg back in is when we're gonna breathe out, engage our pelvic floor and our abdominal muscles as the air leaves. Okay, so same thing, breathing in, straightening the leg. Okay, these are very slow, these are very easy movements, but the idea is to figure out the breathing and the core engagement because we wanna make sure that the air and the pressure within our abdominal cavity is correct, okay? Because what we don't want is to go to do an exercise, breathe, and then you can see me pushing air against my stomach, okay? This is not what we want, okay? That is pushing air against that connective tissue, against those abdominals, weakening them. Okay, what we need to do is engage them so that they're working with the proper pressure inside and not just pushing down or bearing down like a lot of people think, right? We think we have to push out, we think we have to bear down, okay? Or we think we have to suck our belly button in, which also is not it, okay? So we talk through core engagement. Instead of this, okay, we want this. See the difference? Pushed out, engaged. Okay, another exercise that you can do is on all fours, and we can start learning to breathe in this position. Okay, so you wanna make sure that your wrists are underneath those shoulders, your knees are under your hips. The first things first, typically when you are on all fours, your back is going to arch. So what we wanna do is go ahead and flatten that back so you're gonna pelvic tilt, so that back is nice and flat. We're gonna breathe into our rib cage, into our back. As we breathe out, we're gonna start with the pelvic floor, engaging all the way up as the air leaves. Okay, so you'll see a difference in my stomach. If I'm not properly engaged, we're breathing. Okay, that's bearing down. Breathing, engaging properly. Flattens out core is nice and engaged. Okay, so that's another great way. And then another exercise we can do is again on our back. We're going to go ahead and put our legs in tabletop position, which is our shins vertical to the ceiling or horizontal to the ceiling, I guess. We want to make sure that our ribs are pulled down, which means our back is nice pressed to the floor. The first thing we're going to do is the easiest option, which is going to be just dropping one heel, breathing in breathing out and engaging pelvic floor up as the knee comes up. So breathing in, breathing out. Okay, notice that even when you are not doing the exercise or engaged, we are still keeping proper mechanics here, okay? Which is 
low back press to the floor, ribs pulled down, okay? We don't rest at the top and allow this to happen and allow it to just be, you know, relaxed and then do it as we pull up. We wanna start with a solid base, press low back to the floor, pull that rib cage down and engage, breathing into the diaphragm and then engaging deeper as we pull that leg up. Okay, so some ways to think about breathing through the diaphragm, contracting the core properly, making sure the pressure in our abdominal cavity, our intra-abdominal pressure is correct, is regulated, okay, so that we are working on a functional core and a strong core and not just going through the mov movements without actually knowing if they're benefiting us, right? If we do sit-ups, we do crunches without actually thinking about the contraction or starting position or breathing it's not gonna help us, okay? It's just gonna be going through the motions and it could be more detrimental than it could be helpful, okay? So I hope this was helpful for you. Go ahead and read through the rest of the blog post so you can go ahead and get the gist of it, the breakdown of it, some extra information. Enjoy.